up in this bitch a bunch of killers and humble trappers. I can go to Hollywood to call in this jungle act when niggas that are smoking. Right, and, um, I forgot to pronounce his name. Marshall, Marshall Salusky. Yeah. Um, he fought Danny Jacobs. He has a, uh, at one point in time, he was supposed to fight Venice Marta Rosian at 140, 154 pounds, yeah. but he chose to take on uh, Demetrius Andre. So tell me, is this fight taking place at 154 or 160? This fight's taking uh, 160. Middle okay. So, is that your natural weight division right now? Because I remember you were campaigning on a lot at 154 and then having to take bigger fights at 160. So the question is, like, what would you say your natural weight division is now at this stage of your career? Middleweight, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what do you know about Soluski as a fighter? You know, outside of, um, you know, Polish, usually in Polish territories, he brings um, um, a nice crowd. A lot of Polish fans are going to be um, um, watching. But he is more so... Um, to a lot of fans looked at as more so a pressure fighter not necessarily a technician to where you have been showing over the last several years like that you can be a pressure fighter a boxer a mover so yeah. I'm guessing I'm asking even though you can't give away the game plan yeah how are you going to approach this fight I mean I think you know yeah he's, he, he likes to apply pressure but um I mean he's not bringing nothing to the table that I haven't dealt with or haven't mm -hmm. seen and pretty much, I'm at a point in my career where I, I can switch styles. If I got a bra, I'm a bra. If I got to apply pressure, I will. I'm saying if, uh, if I got a box, I can box. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it's all about filling the guy out and seeing what works for you, because it's chess. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just can't go into a fight and say, this is what I'm going to do, and just be stuck on that one game plan, because mm -hmm. then, you gonna keep doing the same thing, but you just gonna keep doing it harder, and not see another, and not see a, a, a an outcome, a different outcome. Yeah. So you gotta be able to adjust. That's what that's what separates fighters: the ability to adjust. So it's just I'm gonna fill them out if the pressure is, is what uh, works, the boxing. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna sit on my shots. I'm gonna try to hurt them. But that's not that's not gonna change. So whether I'm boxing or applying pressure, every shot is gonna be try to take his head off so I'm definitely I'm definitely going for the knockout okay so the big news came out today via press release even though not official that the winner will likely be the mandatory or you know be in line as, as the press release said for um, Demetrius Andre now the second part of that question is how do you think for for example no matter the outcome of any of your fights you always are in relevancy and that's something that a lot of boxers truth be told I guess who was the last one in Toro got it? You know, no matter what happens in your fights, you still always are going to get big fights and people are always going to watch you. Like, where did that come from? Like, was it like that when you were a kid? Like, charisma, people always... You know what I'm saying? I think, um, I think what it was is, you know, just me locking in the number one ranking mm -hmm. at 154 and turning down my mandatory at 154 to go up and fight Golovkin is something that fighters don't do. Yeah. They don't turn down an easy fight at 154. Not saying it was an easy fight, but it was much easier than... Triple G, my mandatory was uh, K9. Mm -hmm. I could have said, oh, this is a guarantee. That's the mindset I had, right? Oh, geez. Because at that point in time, he was about 40, 38, yeah. 40, something like that. Right, but, you know, I saw Triple G, they talking about he's the, he's the man to beat. Yeah. And I went up and wait, and I think the type of fight that I put up, even though I was on match at that, at that time, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I was on match. I think the fans respected the fact that I fought, I gutted it out. I didn't do a catch weight, and I just gained that type of respect, that type of reputation, where like, win, lose, or draw, the fans know what they're going to get when they see me. And at the same time, the fans, they not dumb. I've been robbed plenty of times, where fights that were close, that could have easily went my way, should have went my way. And you know, so, but we back at it, man, you know, like, we back at it, we in a good spot, and I'm just looking forward to uh, taking advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, I was kind of shocked that um, the zone is actually like here. The zone has been making like a lot of like major waves, especially with the potential news of Wilder yeah. possibly coming on, and then yeah. Golovkin yesterday. So I mean, the zone is definitely the future of boxing, mm -hmm. man. You know, they doing great things, big things. You know, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about uh, working with the zone. So I noticed, like uh, me being from Philly, there's a lot of Philly like events going on. For example, you got this major event. You got ESPN coming here on uh, March the 30th for um, the uh, Volstick at 175. And then on the same day, you got uh, UFC. 
Like, what do you think it is where now all of a sudden, you know, and, and, and I guess we can count Atlantic City in with Philly too. Yeah, yeah. What do you think it is with like, you know, Philly, Atlantic City now all of a sudden getting all this exposure in boxing and why weren't we getting this before? I think what it is, I think promoters are being smarter as far as saying like, you know what, we need to put fights in their hometown. In the hometown, because yeah. that's the only way you're really going to build fighters. I think it's crazy when a guy is from like, let's say a guy's from Chicago and they're putting him to fight in, in Minnesota somewhere. Minnesota, or they're yeah. putting him to fight in, and then they're wondering why it's not selling and mm -hmm. you got you to gotta build, it's like when I was coming up, I was coming up in Philly, I was packing, I was packing South Philly. Even when I was fighting in Bethlehem, when I was fighting in Atlantic City, because I was built, I was building a, a, a fan base, and that's important. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think the, the the promoters are catching on to like the way you build the fighter is you keep him at his hometown, and uh, I, eventually the world picks up on it, and then that's when you do big events at at, at uh, Vegas or Madison Square Garden. All right, so um, I know you got to go because you know it's a busy week. Um, give a shout out to uh, you from the Badlands, right? Yeah, man. So give a shout out, and also you got a gym opening up, right? I heard something about it. Yeah, yeah, uh, I got some, but I got I got it opening up in, uh, in uh, Los um, Angeles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. But you know, Badlands born and raised. You know, I'm excited about being back home. A lot of my, my peoples and my family is going to be there supporting. So we excited, man. Yeah, I noticed about that temple, uh, Leah Corson. They get like a lot of walk up. Yeah, you know, yeah. especially like during the night, like, cause um, it was like that with um, Danny Garcia, and Samuel Vargas, yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden, you know, it was like everybody up in there. Yeah, yeah, so I'm confident that the fight gonna, you know, especially yeah, yeah. since it's on a Friday and then it's it's during like the school year. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think, so, I think it's definitely gonna do good. I mean, so um, I'm excited, man. If you ain't get y'all tickets, man, y'all sleeping. I bet jump on it right now, man. It's gonna be lit. All right, Gabriel Zado, see you this uh, Friday night on the Zone against uh, Saluski. For sure, man. Congrats. Thank you, man. All right, man. Have a good night, man. Good week.